Good evening, church. Welcome back to Wednesday night Bible study and prayer time. And uh, glad if you're tuning in with us. Glad to have you with us. Maybe uh, you're not part of Lake Howard Baptist Church, but we're glad that you've been tuning in and following us on Wednesday night. And I hope you've been having a good week as well. Uh, a lot of us finally got a little bit of rain, and uh, that's nice and uh, helped things out. But I do hope you're having a great week and want you to... Uh, just keep praying. There's so much to pray for every week. and It just seems like there's new things, new people that are uh, dealing with situations of life and just so many things happening. And and uh, we just need so much prayer during this day. And we're going to get to that in a minute about praying for some other things. And it's been good the last uh, several weeks, I think so myself. And uh, some so good crowd again this Sunday. Appreciate everybody that came out and uh, Really appreciate Brother Walls and his uh, uh, message that he had Sunday, missionary to uh, Taiwan. It was good to have him, his wife, and uh, his uh, new baby with us. And um, then we had a couple of others that we're going to be talking about Sunday morning. Uh, so remember after the morning service Sunday that we'll be praying and uh, we'll be having a short business meeting over these missionaries and some other uh, things we got to discuss, but it won't be a long meeting. So if you want to be part of that, uh, please come. We won't uh, put that on the air, uh, Facebook or YouTube, but you can come and be part of it if you'd like. And uh, again, we have masks, we have all that stuff. I, I noticed that uh, one of the things we definitely need to do when we come into the church is use the hand sanitizer. When you come in, uh, make sure that you do that. And it would be a great idea to do it on your way out because nobody shook hands or anything while we were having service so make sure that you use it on your way out as well uh, when you leave the church so if you'll just keep doing that i really appreciate it and uh, we just praise the lord for all he's doing here at the church and all that he's doing in our lives and so let's uh, remember to pray for our missionaries i don't have that list in front of me right now it's probably buried under all this paperwork but please remember to pray for our missionaries uh, pray for their safety. Pray for a hedge protection around them. Uh, I, I pray for that all the time for their wives and their children. And a lot of the missionaries right now are, are going on the road by themselves, uh, leaving uh, mom and the kids at home or wherever they're staying at uh, to try to help keep them safe. So just pray uh, for all that situation. Pray for them. Uh, I appreciate all the work that they're doing, the people that are still getting saved. And praise the Lord for that. Uh, in all these different countries and looking to add more light, more light uh, to spread the gospel in these other countries. So please be here, please pray for them. And uh, I want you to look at your prayer list tonight. And um, we do have a, a kind of an urgent prayer request, if you wouldn't mind. And we've been praying for this lady for uh, several years now, but uh, it looks like it's... Uh, her time to, to be meeting the Lord, it looks like it's that time, and I want you to pray for her, her family, her friends, and uh, the doctors are saying that maybe uh, just another day, maybe two at best, and that's Darlene Smith, and uh, she's been fighting cancer for a good while now, and, uh, and uh, she's ready to meet the Lord, so just please pray for her. Uh, over the next couple of days, I really appreciate you lift her family up, her friends up. It's a good friend of Michelle Yeomans, and just pray for all of them. Just uh, they just just need a lot of prayer. So if you please do that, I appreciate it. Uh, our others on our list: Alan Arms, Orlena Baker, Bill Began, Dottie Arnold, Sister Christine, Shirley Chadwin, Piper Davis, David Diller and Taylor, P.J. Dean, Travis Caldwell, Edgman family. Uh, Scotty Cole, Jeremiah, myself, Brother Jerry and Sister Judy, Sister Esther, Sister Alice, Ross Howard, Chad and Wendy, Scott Johnson, Wendell Babb, Hayden Carswell, Miss Hegwood, Alma, Buddy Stevens, uh, Sister Joan and Brother Eddie and her, their family, Darlin and Dennis Smith, those are the ones I was talking about just then, Shirley Smith, Jane and Terry Dobson, Tyra Steeles, Baby Elise, Greg Stevens, Charles Tennant, Perry Dooley, Jimmy Lee, John and Nancy Thomas, Donna Tidwell, Alan Gayton, Brother Russell and his family, uh, Michelle Shamley, Stacy Dent, Sister Susan and Paul David, 
uh, Josh and Jessica, Dennis Forrest, uh, Caden Grant, Daphne Westbrook, Brady Family, Mark Smith, Baby Jamison, Linda Fisher, Jay Huff, Betsy Barclay Reed, Trip Lindsby, Dennis Tucker, Billy and Anna Stevens, Bruce Walker, Fallon Templeton, Nancy Ursery, our military and families. I want to put on there too, under that, our military families, and I want you to put veterans as well. And uh, I don't know, it just seems like uh, lately the Lord has just uh, opened the door for me to talk to a lot more veterans than I ever have in my life and, uh, and just pray for them. Uh, a lot of them got a lot of issues going on. You can tell I've got nothing going on, no, but we need to pray for our veterans and just keep them lifted up because I really, Lord, just, just put a bunch of them in my life recently, so just pray for them. Roy Ritiker, Misty Wooten, Pat Murphy, Angie Wells, uh, Michaela Tennant, Pat and Jay Jones, Tanya Sperling, Donovan Brown, uh, Tommy Jenkins, Tom Stocks and family, Teresa Drennan, Teresa Cravens, Jason Lewis, David Worley, Joe Allen, Denny Lawler, and uh, David Thornburg, Josh Murphy, and then one to add that we found out about today is a guy named Mr. Frankie. Uh, if you'll put him down there, just health uh, issues. He was a firefighter in the past, and now he's got uh, uh, asbestos in his lungs, a lot of lung trouble. So please pray for him and keep him lifted up. Um, a lot of these first responders uh, give themselves all these years and then uh, then they have health problems and we definitely don't want to forget about them. We want to pray for them and keep them lifted up. So let's go to the Lord in prayer now and pray over that, pray over our lesson tonight. Lord, we thank you for this night and Lord, I do pray for all these that are uh, dealing with the issues of life, Lord. Some of them uh, even right now looking at death's door and Lord, I pray that you give them the grace and mercy, and Lord, that uh, their faith and trust is in the Lord Jesus Christ, and Lord, that uh, maybe when people see someone passing on, to know that uh, they're, they're, we need our, our heart and our, and our um, life straight with you, Lord, and I pray for that, and Lord, I do pray that, uh, Lord, uh, for these military and these veterans, Lord, I pray for them. I pray for the first responders, Lord, that are that are putting their life on the line, even in our country right now. And we always think, Lord, about them being in foreign countries, but they're having to do it right here on our own ground. And Lord, uh, that just seems very odd to me right now, uh, but it is a, uh, it is a fact. And Lord, I pray for them. I pray for uh, the situations that are going on in this country, Lord. I pray for uh, the ones that are battling this virus, Lord, and we know many of them that are uh, dealing with that right now, and I pray for them, and, and uh, Lord, we uh, may not always understand your hand in all that's going on, but I do know that you're in control. I do know that your uh, will will be done, Lord, and I pray uh, that we can accept your will, and uh, Lord, we do pray for our missionaries, Lord. We love them, and we care for them, and Lord, that you just take care of them out there on the on the front lines, winning people to Christ and starting churches. And, and Lord, that you just uh, direct their paths, Lord. And I pray for our people here at church, Lord. And we have some that are battling illnesses. We have some that are battling uh, uh, different uh, issues in their life, family problems and everything under the sun. Lord, even... Uh, some some family members tonight that's on my heart, Lord. I pray for them. I pray for some young people in my family, Lord, that you would help them and speak to their heart, Lord. And, and all of us have uh, lost loved ones that need Jesus Christ, every one of us, Lord. And I pray that the Holy Spirit of God would work in their hearts and lives. And, and Lord, we just, uh, we just love you tonight. We pray over the lesson uh, about your word, Lord, that it just sink deep in our hearts and, and help us to get closer to you, Lord. Help us to be uh, mature Christians. Help us to grow if we're babies, Lord, and the Lord into something that's well-pleasing to you. Lord, I just, again, thank you for the blessings that you've poured out on this church, Clayton, that you've poured out on my family. Lord, I thank you for my kids, my wife, Lord, 
uh, just thank you for everything that you do in Jesus name amen all right let's uh, go ahead and take our uh, Bibles I want you to just pray for me too if you don't mind my eyes are giving me a fit so if they get too bad and I can't read here tonight or something then we'll have to cut it short but you just pray for me and uh, keep me lifted up there I appreciate that and go ahead and find first Peter chapter 2 first Peter chapter 2 I've been meditating on these verses uh, for the last three days the Lord uh, give me a, 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 a scenario for it and and I think about it, and this this ain't really going to start off where you're jumping up and down going, Woo, Brother Ron, that's some good stuff. Uh, just what the Lord put on my heart and, and the truth about some things. And then we'll get into uh, the good part toward the end, uh, and, and not probably not in the beginning. So don't tune me out too quick and say, oh, man, I don't want to hear all that tonight. Uh, but just, just, be, just follow with me for a minute. First Peter chapter 2. Uh, starting in just three verses, the first three verses there. Uh, Peter says this, he says, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings, as newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby, if so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Let's pray one more time over that. Father, help us tonight. As we look in your word, help us tonight that uh, our hearts will be open to the word of God. We give you the honor and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. It's certainly no, uh, it, it, it's no surprise and it's no, uh, uh, you know, no uh, guessing about the fact of the condition that most Christians are in today. That uh, most Christians today are, are uh, very weak. Uh, they're and, and I'm, th I'm being in the whole time of history. I believe um, those great revivals, those great uh, things that we've heard in the past, all of that is not something that we're really seeing happening today, and we're definitely not seeing it happening in America. And and uh, one of the things that we see, and uh, I'm going to get a little bit more into that today, is we see very very. Uh, weak Christians that don't even know the Word of God. They don't, uh, they much less praying, much less uh, doing all that, but don't even know what God's Word says. So how do you know that? Well, it's not very hard. I've uh, studied my Bible for years and years and years and uh, been to Bible college, taught Bible college, done all that kind of stuff, and I'm by no means I don't know everything there is, and that's for sure, but the, some of the things people say, and it's almost weekly that I have people tell me stuff about their lost loved ones, and they make comments that don't even make sense. They tell me about uh, sicknesses, and, and they try to uh, spiritualize everything. They try to do all that, and it doesn't back up with the Word of God. Uh, and, and you know, a lot of times our emotions, and, and we're going to get back to that verse 1, but a lot of times our emotions... Uh, cause us to make us think something spiritual when it's not or try to make out something that God is trying to do when he's not doing it at all. And, and, and where that stems from is, is a lack of knowledge and a lack of wisdom from the Word of God. And, and you know, I, God didn't give us his Word. This is one of the most precious. I love my Bible. I love it. I know all of y'all got, I got them on my devices too. I got King James Version on my phone, on my iPad and all that stuff. But I like picking up my Bible. I like picking up the Word of God here. And I like looking at it and I like reading it. And to think that God loved me enough that he, uh, inspired uh, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, had his Word written down that he doesn't keep me in the in in the dark places. He don't keep me hid uh, from what he's trying to do. He, he and matter of fact, he says, if you'll pray, I'll give you wisdom and knowledge, and you can get it out of my word. And I I'm thankful for all that stuff. And and he didn't give us the word of God to hurt us. He didn't give it to us to uh, dictate our lives and to do all that stuff. But he gave us his word, one that we may know him. Amen. That we can get to know God. And that missionary hit on that this Sunday uh, because people got in their mind 
uh, what God is this and God is that, and they haven't read their Bible to find out the God of the Bible. The God of the Bible doesn't change, and he hasn't changed, but yet society tries to change him. But what I'm getting at is not only do we know him, but he gives us the word of God so that we can be strong Christians, where we can have wisdom, where we can know the things that are going on around us. And that, and knowing that, what we do instead of walking around saying things that don't make no sense or going around and starting cults and going around doing all those sort of things, it's so our life can bring honor and glory to God uh, with what we do. And one of the things that most definitely brings honor and glory to God is knowing what you're talking about and knowing what God has said. And uh, so I, I, I want you to think about that as, and you know, uh, of what I've learned in my Christian life is that most people are ignorant and unlearned. Uh, and I, I fought that on two different things. I, I, I look at, I don't blame it all on the Christian. I blame a lot of it on preachers and pastors. I do. I put a lot of that. If you go back in your Old Testament and you read a lot of that, God puts the blame on uh, pastors, preachers, and all that priest and all that. God puts the blame on them because they've turned away from the Word of God and they have done all that. And that is that has flowed into our society today in America, without a doubt. And you know, uh, most of the time, our pastors are are, are are afraid to teach. Thus saith the Lord God. They're afraid of most of the verses in the Bible. They're afraid to stand in the pulpit and teach their people that God has put over them what the Bible says. Hey, especially when it comes to your family. Uh, how it's set up, and, uh, they, they're afraid of those things. And, uh, and we, what we've seen our churches turned into today uh, is big social clubs. That's what they are. They're gigantic social clubs with hopped up music and all of that stuff going on and, and, uh, and the preaching that produces no change in people's life. I, I say it uh, sometimes, they, you know, people say, oh, come as you are, just come like you are and all that. The sad part is you come in just like that and you leave just like that. There's no change in your life. And when I come to church and I'm under a, listening to preaching, I want it to change my life. I don't want to come in the same old Christian that I, I want to be closer to God. I want to know more about God. I want to know more about my life that I can change to bring honor and glory to God when I come to church. But that's not what church is about hardly anywhere anymore. I have gotten some good comments from some people that I don't even know. I don't never met these people, but they have listened to the preaching on Sunday morning and says, I can't believe there's still a preacher out there that'll say these things about sin and living right and all that. That's what we need. And, you know, I can get up there with a big smile on my face every Sunday morning and tell you wonderful things that'll make you feel great, and you'll go right back in the world, back in sin, back in everything else, and still not how to deal with being a Christian in today's world and not be able to have any effect on you water whatsoever. The preaching is watered down. Uh, I mean, if there's pastors out there listening to me and you're one of them, God help you. Get yourself some... Uh, prayer time with God and get yourself some uh, boldness and stand on the word of God, preach the word of God with compassion and with love. Amen. That's that's what God wants us to do. And you know what I what another thing that, that gets me is a lot of pastors in it now for the money. They're more worried about money and the numbers than they are their people growing in the Lord. What good does it do if you got a thousand people and they don't know anything about God's word? I think we'd have to answer pretty heavily for that one day uh, when we get to heaven. The second is the problem is our individual fault. You can't blame everything on the pastors. A lot of it comes there, but a lot of it comes from our own individual selves. And uh, when you get saved, that's why God gave you the Bible. That's why you can go out and have the word of God. Matter of fact, when I know somebody gets saved, I make sure they got the Word of God because you need to read it, you need to study it, you need to figure it out uh, to know what it says. You need to get yourself into a Bible preaching church when you get saved. Uh, you need to get yourself 
a, a Bible reading plan. You need to get yourself a studying plan, not just read it, but a time to study it as well. And that's the individual faults. I want you to look here tonight in verse 1 of chapter 2 of 1 Peter. Uh, when this transformation and what he's saying here, I remember when I got saved, uh, man, I was rough around the edges. Oh my goodness, I was super rough around the edges. And and you know, all this transformation and all these things don't happen uh, in a second. It takes time uh, sometimes. And we look here, it says, so here's we, we are. He says, wherefore, laying aside all malice and guile. I wrote these things down. You know, before we get saved, a lot of us, now not everybody, my wife ain't one of those people. My wife was uh, a goody two-shoes that got saved and uh, she wasn't out doing the things I did, and, and a lot, but a lot of us have. And a lot of us are that way, and even a goody two-shoes may have evil thoughts and, and uh, have evil ways about them, even though they're not on the outside and everything else. But he says, lay aside all malice and all guile, and hypocrisies, put that aside, print it, that's pretending to uh, have morals and all that stuff. You just pretend like it on the outside, but you ain't got none. Uh, hypocrisies, envies, uh, and all evil speakings. He said, put that aside, uh, get rid of those things. And then in verse two, you can put a big then, then, uh, as newborn babes, as newborn babes, desire. See that word in there? It says, as newborn babes, desire. I, I, I thought about that for a while, our desires, when we, when we try to get closer to God, when we are saved. I think a lot of times we get saved and we're so happy that we're going to heaven uh, we're so glad that, that uh, we finally put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, but our desires is still for the world, and our desires are still in the wrong place. So as newborn babes, he says, desire the sincere milk of the word. <laughs> so we're, there's supposed to be a changing in our attitude. There's a change in our emotions. There's a change... And all of that in our desire is not to bring shame to God anymore. Our desire is not to bring shame uh, to the local church. Our desire is not, but our desire is to get closer to God. Our desire is to get close to God by the word of God. This, is, this book, reading the Bible, reading these things, gets us closer to God. It's how we grow. It's the words that we need. That's why Peter says here, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. That's where we come up with weak Christians all the time. That's where we come up with Christians that don't know what they're talking about when they say things. And I, uh, I've heard it all the time. People, one of the scariest things for a preacher, I think, is when we give testimony time. Uh, my wife has been with me in many, 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 many services where the pastor will get up and say, anybody got a word for the Lord? And you always want to give opportunity for that, but you're scared to death at the same time what's fixing to come out of somebody's mouth or what they're going to say. And it's usually the same ones. Uh, it, it's been my experience in the past and, and some churches that I've been in before that when the preacher does that, you already know that something crazy is fixing to be said by somebody and you cringe at it. Why is it that way? It's because we don't know what the Word of God says. We say things that that uh, we have experienced or we say things that our emotions get the best of us or we say things like that that are not true in the Word of God. Uh, so we have to learn. That's how we grow and get strong. It's necessary for growth. For the child of God to get in the word of God. Jesus said this in Matthew chapter 4 and verse 4. He said this. He said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. This is the word of God. This is the stuff that he wanted written down for you and I to read so that we can uh, grow in our lives. Uh, God put this thought on my heart Sunday afternoon. Whoa, I didn't lock the chair back. 
I was almost trying to take a nap earlier before. But anyway, I was uh, sitting there Sunday. I had a good Sunday afternoon. I had Brother Walls and his wife and their little baby over. He is nine months old. And uh, they, they had this really cute chair. And I know this sounds odd. I was kind of struck at it in, at the beginning of it anyway. But had a little chair they sat on the, the table that the baby sat in and they fed the baby right there in front of them and stuff. Nine months old, she could sit up by herself and all that. Most of y'all met her if you came to church. And uh, so I'm sitting there at the end of the table and I'm watching this little baby and the mama's feeding it. So she gives, I, Hannah was her name, right? Little Hannah? Anna. Anna. So she puts, we had uh, sweet peas and uh, I forget what other vegetable we had, corn I think it was or whatever. And she put them sweet peas up there and I was sitting there watching that baby. And I was waiting to watch her spit them out or put them on the table or throw them down or something. And she got me so tickled because she hums the whole time she eats. Once she starts eating, she's humming. And she picked them peas up and was just eating them as fast as mom put them there. She was eating those peas. I mean, chewing them up, eating them and swallowing them and all that. And I said, that is amazing that that baby is eating those sweet peas. So I think Nana or somebody asked her about that. Somebody asked her about her eating those sweet peas just like that one after another. And the mom said, oh, she didn't like them at first. Said uh, she didn't have anything to do with them at first because they uh, didn't taste right to her or whatever. But, you know, I just kept putting them on there. And this has been going on for a couple months. And she said, you know what? After she tasted a few of them and after she got used to it, now she loves to eat them. I sat there and I thought about that for a minute. And I thought about new Christians when they get saved. And they come to church. And if you got a Bible preaching church that preaches out of the King James Bible and he preaches the Word of God, you know when you first get saved, some of those messages are pretty tough. Some of those messages are kind of hard to swallow when uh, he's preaching on sin and preaching on getting your life right and all that. And you're sitting there going, man... I'm pretty daggum wicked even though I'm saved and I've got all these problems or he gets up there and starts preaching on bitterness. Oh my good, that's a hard uh, sweet pea to swallow, isn't it? Or he starts preaching on uh, uh, loving your brother, loving this and doing that and you ain't been saved long and you go, man, that's that stuff don't taste very good to me. Uh, and I thought about that little baby after she got used to those sweet peas, after she ate them long enough, then she hummed and and ate it joyfully i mean seriously as she ate those sweet peas i thought man that's the way christians are today that's the way a lot of them are when they hear the word of god they don't like it very much but i'll tell you what if you keep reading it and you keep studying it and you keep hearing it and it keeps going into your heart and god keeps changing you and god you allow god to uh, work on your heart and your mind. You know what happens when the pre you look forward to preaching. I do. I look forward to preaching. I know uh, some people don't like riding down the road listening to preaching. My wife hates hates talk radio. She hates that. And uh, I like it. I like listening to preaching when I go on trips. I like putting a CD in and listening to preaching and all that kind of stuff. And and I enjoy it. I like. Uh, uh, listening to good preaching. I like I like listening to bad preaching because it, it helps me understand what not to do. Amen? Uh, so, but, it, but you have to learn that and read your Bible. You have to, to have that desire to read your Bible. And I know sometimes it's rough when you read the Bible and you read some of these things, but you need them in your life to help you. And uh, I, I sat there and I watched that and learned that. And, you know, on Sunday school, when we had Sunday school, uh, and we had regular things going on, we were studying Matthew. And uh, we just finished the Sermon on the Mount uh, the last couple Wednesday nights, and I was finishing up a few thoughts from that. And that's what we've been studying. But we didn't. I didn't go over this last part of it. Now, I'll turn to Matthew chapter 7 for a minute. Matthew chapter 7 is the end of that sermon that Jesus was preaching, that Jesus was teaching on the mount. And in verse 24, he says this. So he does all that. He talks about prayer, fasting that we just got through looking at. He talked about 
uh, giving. He talked about everything of the Son that we've talked about in the last, uh, this has been going on for months. We've been looking at the Sermon on the Mount, talking about all these things. And then in verse 24, he says, Matthew 7, 24, he says, Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them, I will liken unto him a wise man which built his house upon a rock. So uh, there's more to just hearing it, but he says, whosoever heareth of these and doeth them, uh, and then we'll get to those attributes in a minute, in verse 25, and it says, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. I look at the wise man real quickly, and he says, if you hear these things and you do them, the wise man, number one, was grounded. He was grounded. He didn't. He wasn't wavering on the word of God. He wasn't uh, going back and forth in his life, not one day for God and one day for the world or one day for God, one day for the devil. He was grounded in his life, uh, grounded on the rock. The rock was the foundation of Jesus Christ. And, uh, and then if you look at it this way, I do. Here's a man that listens to God's word. Here's a man that not only listens to it, but he practices God's word. Uh, that's something that a lot of folks uh, try to manipulate in their life is practicing God's word. Uh, I taught uh, first a year or whatever on tithing. I taught on faith promise. I, and people hear it, but they don't necessarily do it. They, they waver on that kind of stuff. And same thing with, with praying. They hear it. Same thing with fasting. Anything you want to uh, come up with in the Bible that's taught, and uh, But here's a man, this wise man hears and does it, and look at the strength that he has. Look at the maturity that he has. The rains, the storms of life descend upon him. Listen, just because you're close to God doesn't mean the storms of life ain't going to come pounding down. The Bible says it rains on the just and the unjust. And so here's the man that's founded on Jesus Christ. He's uh, listens and he does the word of God and the storms come and the storms do not destroy him. The storms don't beat him down. The storms don't do all that to him. They win, the, the winds of the storm don't blow him apart. He is solid in the Lord. Why? Because he came to church? No. He's solid in the Lord because he was a member of Lake Howard Baptist Church? No. Because he, no, he wasn't, because he listened to God and he practiced what God told him to do. Then when the storms of life came, then when the rains descended, then when the wind blew, it didn't blow him down, it didn't destroy him. There's another part there, First Peter, I think it was, or Second Peter, I, I have to go look for sure, you, you out there that are analyzing every word I say, but there's a part in there that if you do these things, you shall not fall. And people don't listen to God's word. They don't pay attention to those things. Then he goes right into the next person, the fool. He says, everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon the house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Hey, there is a lot of foolish Christians out there, a lot of foolish people that do not know the Word of God and do not practice the Word of God. And if, hey, you know them, you might be one of them that is always devastated about everything, that is always the sky is falling all the time. Everything, all the time. Everything is happening in their life all the time. And people that sit back that's grounded and their faith is on the Lord Jesus Christ and all that, they look back and go, what are you going crazy for? Why are you falling apart for? This is, even this time of COVID, I mean, I have seen Christians fall apart right now during the time of COVID. This, read your Bible. He says there's going to be pestilences. There's going to be diseases. There's going to be all this stuff. There's going to be everything going on right now. Why are you shocked? You're shocked because you don't know the Word of God. You're shocked because you haven't studied. You're shocked. And you know what? You're weak. 
You have to study and know so that you're strong in the Lord. Look at verse 28. It says, And it came to pass when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his, and this is the word I want you to look at, at his doctrine. I started to start a series again on doctrine. I did it last year, two years ago, and it's the most important thing in your life as far as a child of God is to have sound doctrine when it comes to the word of God. And so many people don't have that. And he says they were astonished at his doctrine, God's doctrine. He says, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. You can imagine how the scribes were. The scribes say one thing and do another. The scribes did all that kind of stuff. But here he says, the one having authority and about his doctrine. Uh, turn to 2 Timothy real quick, or I'm going to read 2 Timothy to you. 2 Timothy 3 and verse 16 and 17. The Bible, this is what he says about the Bible, about doctrine, about the scripture. He said, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. Profitable for doctrine. For reproof, like this one, for correction for instruction in righteousness, and this is the purpose of it, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. You know what he's saying? He's saying so that the man of God or the woman of God will not be a fool that built their house on the sand and when the storms of life came, it beat it down, but that you are a wise man that these, by, that these scriptures is profitable for your doctrine, for your reproof, for your correction, for your instruction in righteousness, so that when the things of life come, when it's time to work for God, when it's time to do those, you don't fall apart. You don't fall to pieces. And today is the day that we live in today. And I'm telling you, sometimes God puts a message on my heart and I shake my head. And I go, oh boy. And I pray and I say, Lord, you sure that's what you want me to preach on? And I pray and I pray and, and the Lord says, that's what I want you to preach on. And I, I say, okay. And I fret and I do all that kind of stuff and I preach, I be obedient, preach the message God puts on my heart and I'm thinking I'm going to lose half my people right here when I preach this message. And it amazes me how many people say that's exactly what I need in my life. Preacher, I was dealing with that problem and you helped me. Preacher, I, I had this problem and, and that message helped me and everything else. You know, a real Christian, a real child of God that's trying to get close to God can't get enough of the Word of God, can't get enough of that in their life. And even when it's correction, we need that correction in our life when it comes and the Word of God uh, is, is there to help us. It's there to strengthen us and make us the strong child of God that He wants us to be. I'm not saying you're not going to get sad sometimes. I'm not saying that, that when somebody that you love passes away that you're not going to mourn and cry or that when you find out that you might have cancer or find out you've got something going on that you're not going to break down. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that at all. Uh, all of that stuff is very devastating to us. We live in the flesh uh, we're, we have the flesh to deal with. We have all those emotions. We have that. I'm not saying that at all, but it shouldn't knock your faith out of you. It shouldn't knock you to the ground to where you question God about everything in your life and all that. It, it shouldn't do that in your life. And uh, so that's what I'm saying. Then I want you to look at this last thing that I'm closing. Uh, look over in Psalms 119. Psalms 119, most of you know these verses anyway, you learn them in vacation Bible school uh, most of the time, but Psalms 119, a very, very lengthy chapter in the Bible, if you know anything about your Bible, Psalms 119 and 105, I'm going to start in 103, and uh, 103, it says this, how sweet are thy words unto my taste, how sweet. There's many times in the Bible, if you look it up, that these writers that wrote the Bible talked about how sweet God's word was to their taste. He says, how sweet are thy words unto my taste, yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate 
every false way. Well, you know, the only way you're going to know the false way is knowing the true way, and that's in God's Word. Verse 105, this is the one that you know, says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I'm going to tell you, as a Christian, as a child of God, there has been times where it almost seems like I couldn't find my way where I needed to be. And I, I can think of two or three places right now where it just seems like I wasn't in the will of God. It just seems like that what I was doing in my life wasn't the right way. It just wasn't the right path. And I started reading my Bible, and God directed me in the path that I should be on. You know, when I, when I, as being pastor of this church, I can't tell you how many times my prayer is, God, direct my path. Because you said if I acknowledge you, you will direct my path. And I do that all the time for this church. Direct our path. Hey, I want our church to be uh, a church that is well-pleasing to God. I want our church to be uh, a place where people come and worship God. I want our church to be right with God and all those things. But I don't want to compromise to get people. I don't want to compromise to have a thousand people here. I don't want to compromise uh, to have four or five buses in the in the parking lot. I don't want I don't want to do that. I don't want to compromise on on the on the, the uh, convictions that I have. I don't want to do that in order to get people here. I want it to bring honor and glory to God. And the only way that I'm going to know that is by reading my Bible and studying. It says, "Thy word is a lamp unto my feet." And aligning my path. I, my whole job ain't pastoring here. I have another job and it's running the shop and all that. And I've got men that I love that work for me. I love them and I care about them. And there's a lot of decisions to be made all the time. And I pray God help me to direct this business of mine. Help me that my shop brings honor and glory to you. Just This thing ain't just a spiritual thing when you come to church. We're to, direct, we're to use the Word of God to help in every aspect of our life. There's a family right now that I've been praying for. There's a family that's having problems and, and having issues. You know where they need to go? The Word of God. They need to seek God. They need to read what God has said about the family. They need to seek God about all those sort of things. That's where they're going to get their answers from. And I'm praying that. I'm praying that they would do that and read their Bible and uh, get those answers. And you know what? This is what's amazing. There's some people, there's some people that I didn't have a lot of confidence in, but they have stepped up to the plate and have magnified God and they have talked about God's Word and, and, I, and these are some that I thought were very shallow in their religion and all that kind of, but I was shocked and I thought, you know what? They must really study God's word. They must really dig into God's word to know these scriptures and to know what God says and all that. And, and you know what? When I look at their life, God is just blessing their life. God is just pouring it out in their life. God is just helping them and God is using them to help other people that are weak in their faith, that are weak in their life, and God is using them to help them. And I thought, man, it, it put a smile on my face. I'm telling you, it made me excited to know that. And I pray the same thing for our church. I pray that we have people that can help other people uh, with the Word of God and help direct them and, uh, and uh, just use God's Word. And I, I would like to just keep on going about things about God's Word. I'm not going to tonight. I'm going to end right here on that. Uh, and we'll pick up on something next Wednesday night uh, to study. But listen, folks. There, every day you should read your Bible. Read your iPhone if you're one of them. Just make sure it's the right one. Or if it's your iPad or whatever. But read God's Word. Get you a good devotional book and read it. Get you some verses and read it. 
One of the things that, that's the easy place to start, easy place to start, proverb a day. Read a chapter of Proverbs every day. There's 31 of them. Read them. If the days don't last, then double up one day and get two of them. But read a Proverbs a day. It's a good place to start. There is so much wisdom and so much knowledge in that one book. It will help you in your Christian life like you wouldn't believe. Uh, it will help you with how to treat others. It will help you uh, when you look at others, how what God says about all of it. So just start there. Start there. Do something, but read your Bible every day. All right, let's pray and then we'll close. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you for Bible study. Thank you for working in our hearts and lives. And Lord, there is a lot of people out there that need a touch from you. Lord, they need direction. They need help. Lord, I pray that you give it to them. Lord, I pray for a good Sunday coming up this Sunday morning. Lord, that people would come and uh, just, just want to bring honor and glory to you with everything, Lord, in Jesus' name. One other thing, got to add real quick, I forgot. Saturday morning, anybody that would like to come and help, should I say that? I shouldn't say that to anybody. Any members that would like to come and help or regulars that would like to come and help work, work. Not socialize because we're not talking and we're not doing all that. We're working. Anybody that would like to come Saturday morning at 9 o'clock, uh, me and Brother Paul David's going to be cleaning the outside of the church, and we really need a good going through on the inside of the church, dusting the walls and dusting the wood and, and cleaning the bathrooms and all that good stuff that goes along with being a Christian. Amen? Uh, so at 9 o'clock, if you can come, uh, we'd really appreciate it. Be a short one, too. Be an hour, two hours, unless we really get into it. But it'll be a short one. Just clean the church up, and I uh, appreciate it if you can come and help. Amen. Thank you.